And our next topic in nuclear physics is carbon-14 dating, which is a very interesting topic because this is how we figure out how old fossils are. So, first of all, what we do is we take a 10 gram sample or any quantity, I just chose 10 grams, so 10 gram sample of carbon from, let's say, a living tree. We put it into a machine, we measure the decay rate, and we find that the decay rate is two decays per second. Then we go to our fossil, we take off a little piece of fossil, 10 grams, put it in the same machine, measure the decay rate, and now the decay rate is only 0.25 decays per second. So, how old is the fossil? Well, first of all, we realize that the amount of the, uh, radioactive material that's left as a function of time is equal to the original that you started with times e to the minus lambda times t. Now, since the decay rate is proportional to the number of, of uh, radioactive uh, nuclei in the sample, remember that the dn dt is equal to lambda times n, so we can then say we can replace the n and the n sub naught by the dn dt and the dn dt sub naught because they're proportional anyway, so we can write that the rate, the dn dt, of the sample is equal to the dn dt of the original test sample, and let's call this the dn dt like that, times e to the minus lambda times t. Now, of course, we still have to find lambda. I know we've done it before, but just for practice, let's do it again. The decay constant is equal to 0 0.693 divided by the half-life. So that's equal to 0 0.693 three divided by 5,730 years. So if we grab our calculator, we can figure out what that is. So 0 0.693 divided by 5,730 equals, so that would be um, 1.2094 times 10 to the minus four per year. So that's the decay constant for carbon-14. Plug in the numbers here. Let's see what we get. That's the decay rate that we currently have in our sample. So 0 0.25 equals the decay rate that we have from a fresh sample, which is 2, times e to the minus. The decay constant is 1.2094 times 10 to the minus 4 per year times t. And what we have to do here now is figure out what the time elapsed is. What t will make this equation come out like that? All right, well, first what we're going to do is divide both sides by 2. And 0.25 divided by 2 is the same as uh, 1 8, because 0.25 goes into 1 4 times, so it goes into 2 8 times. So coming over here, I can say that 1 8 is equal to e to the minus 1.2094 times 10 to the minus 4 per year times t. Now, of course, we're going to take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of 1 8 is equal to the natural log of e to the minus 1.2094 times 10 to the minus 4 per year times t, like so. And of course, this will negate that. So we have the natural log of 1 8 is equal to minus 1.209 times 10 to the minus 4 per year times t. And of course, dividing both sides by this quantity right here, we have the natural log of 1 8 divided by minus 1.2094 times 10 to the minus 4 per year is equal to t, and all we have to do now is grab our calculator, plug those numbers in there, see what we get. So take the inverse of that, since I already have that in my calculator, and multiply that times um, hmm, 1 divided by 8, and that is, take the natural log of that, and that's equal, and the answer I get is that the time elapsed, or the age of that fossil, is equal to 17,000 194 years. Of course, how accurate is that method? Do we know it down to the nearest year? Of course not, because that all depends upon how accurately we're able to, to, uh, calcul to measure the decay rates of the elements. And one of the big things about trying to measure the decay rate of a, of a, 
uh, sample from a fossil is that there's natural radiation occurring around us all the time which also cause decays to be measured uh, by the measuring apparatus that you're using and so we have to take that into account so there's a certain amount of uncertainty here so definitely uh, we know we're in the ballpark but it's probably plus or minus uh, 50 years or plus or minus 100 years we can't be all that accurate but anyway that is how we find the age of fossils and this is a good method, carbon-14 is a good method for fossils to the age of maybe 40 or 50,000 years. Anything beyond that, the decay rate will go down so small to the point where it's almost indiscernible from the natural radiation around us that you can no longer pick up the decay, uh, the decay rate of these radioactive samples when they're too old. But anyway, that's how you do that. And again, a quick review. We find out what the original decay rate is for living tissue or for living carbon or carbon coming from recently living materials. Then we get a equivalent size sample of the fossil. We measure the decays there. We plug those numbers in, in our decay equation. We find the decay constant and then we take the natural log of both sides and solve for T to find the age of the fossil. And that's how we do that.